Hey fellas, it's Colin and you're watching Magic Strawberry. The Prison Break genre might be a bit played out and a bit formulaic at this point, but when done with enough nuance, it can still be as enthralling as ever, as is the case here. Today I'll be reviewing A Way Out. See that tower? Yeah. That's where we're heading. A Way Out revolves around two protagonists, Leo the impulsive renegade and Vincent the methodical tactician. Both of them find themselves locked away in this expansive maximum security prison that at first glance gives them serious Shawshank vibes. Speaking of which, Vincent being a former bank teller who was falsely convicted for murder sounds very reminiscent of another character, but I can't quite put my finger on it. Anyways, Leo and Vincent find out their fates are more tied than they initially expected, and they decide to break out of the prison, and they succeed. Much like the show Prison Break, the bulk of the story takes place after its said prison break, as our characters spend the rest of the game escaping police and managing their own personal affairs. The first thing from the game that immediately jumps out at you is the prospect that this game is exclusively co-op. Some people might find this a bit gimmicky, but you soon learn that the game really couldn't have been done another way. And personally, I love this aspect of the game. Couch co-op has often been shoved aside in favor of online multiplayer. So when a game that encourages local co-op comes along, it feels extremely refreshing. Speaking of online multiplayer, only one person actually needs to own the game in order for two people to play, which is rather generous of EA. Co-op is also by far the biggest highlight of the game. You will feel a tremendous amount of joy when you figure out puzzles together, beat enemies, not to mention a plethora of dumb but addicting activities you can do along the way like dips, pull-ups, darts, connect four, wheelchair balancing, arm wrestling, horseshoes, and baseball. Also, there's this really sweet moment that occurs when both of your characters find instruments, and I won't elaborate on it any further, for I want you all to fully experience this tender moment. The gameplay is sometimes stiff, but it's entertaining nonetheless, not to mention simple, as most of it is just moving around and interacting with the environment around you. But whenever the game starts to feel a bit mundane, there's always a big action set piece right around the corner, and things start to pick up again. Yes, the shooting mechanics aren't as fluid as most other third-person shooters, and the melee combat and driving just felt awkward, but the cinematic qualities of the game more than make up for it. A Way Out wears its cinematic influences on its sleeve. Whether it's trying to break through a door but you have to time the impact right when the lightning strikes just like that scene in the Shawshank Redemption, or a hallway fighting sequence just like that one-shot fight scene in Old Boy. A Way Out basically feels like a Telltale game except with more gameplay. Most of the game plays out in split screen too, which allows both players to freely move about as they figure out one puzzle to the next. But there are clever sequences in which the game does away with the split screen such as when you're trying to escape a hospital when under siege by the police, which plays out in an unbroken one-shot sequence with the camera constantly shifting back and forth to both of the characters. The story and most of the dialogue for that matter is heavily contrived. The prison break and revenge plot is simple enough, but it's when the game tries to make you care about the characters' personal lives that I started to tune out, because they do it in such a heavy-handed way. And some of the dialogue is painful to listen to, it's honestly Heavy Rain-esque levels of awkward. Now that I think about it, why do most dialogue-driven games struggle with dialogue? But I digress. It's better if you don't take the game very seriously. My brother and I laughed at most of the dialogue and we had a ball with the game regardless. A Way Out also runs out of steam about 5 or 6 hours in, which is good, because that's about the actual length of the game. The ending and climax of the story is worth sticking around for though. A Way Out may have awkward gameplay and dialogue, but the cinematics, co-op, and fun diversionary activities ensures that this game is well worth its $30 price tag. This game brings back co-op gameplay in a big way, and I hope it leads to more games just like it. The game unfortunately fails in its ham-fisted attempt to carry across some of its story, but most other aspects of A Way Out make up for it. With all that said, I give A Way Out a 7.5 out of 10. I emerge victorious. Pure luck. Thanks for watching Magic Strawberry. Make sure to like and subscribe to our channel and follow us on Twitter at ZTV Goofing Off if you so please. Bye bye.